Today, I'd like to talk about lumbar discectomy. And uh, the reason I'd like to talk about this is to explain the procedure and also talk about the risks and complications uh, of this procedure so that if there's any questions that you might have uh, that you can ask me after watching this video. Um, first of all, let's just talk a little bit about the procedure. If it's a lumbar discectomy we're talking about, we have the lumbar spine like this. Uh, actually, in on the operating room, you're actually laying face down. And you can see that uh, we've got the vertebrae and the little cushions between, or the discs or cushions are between the vertebrae. And we'll assume that one of them is bad, it's got a bulge or is uh, painful. Uh, and pushing up against the nerves or the spinal cord itself. In this particular situation, uh, a tube, which is about this size, uh, not, not even a quarter inch, is uh, actually pushed through the skin and kind of aim down th into, the, uh, into the disc space, into the foraminal canal, and then uh, pushed into that. Uh, this allows me then to start working inside the disc and then come out uh, while removing the, the piece of disc that's fragmented or herniated uh, during that period in time. And I have grasping instruments to do that. But these are about the size of the spine, size of the uh, tube that goes into the disc space. The, uh, uh, you say, well, geez, well, what, what can actually go wrong during this type of procedure? Probably the most common and the most significant uh, uh, complication is what they call discitis. And discitis is actually, an, although it's called an inflammation of the disc that's been operated on, probably it's a very low-grade infection. And uh, uh, why does this occur? It usually occurs, or people, it's noticeable about 10 to 14 days after uh, a procedure and most likely because you've got organisms that float around your system before the white blood cells uh, can pick them up. And where do these come from? Well, you can even from brushing your teeth, from scratching your skin. Uh, there's numerous ways, just uh, the organisms that are inside of our uh, GI tract can be uh, seeded or GU tract uh, can also be temporarily seeded in the bloodstream and they can float around before they're picked up by the white blood cells. So in these situations, if one of these happens to find a uh, freshly kind of operated site where there might be a little hematoma, uh, this might be like a resort area for these germs. And if they set up shop, and usually they're fairly, fairly low, they're fairly low grade virulence, but if they set up shop and they start an infective process, uh, you get increased pain afterward, about two weeks afterward, and uh, needs to be treated with IV antibiotics, which can last certainly six to eight weeks uh, afterward. Uh, so this is the, and it happens uh, really, uh, you know, about maybe 2% of the time. It's not, doesn't happen that often, but if it does happen uh, to you, it's 100% and it's a, uh, it's a problem. So it has to be treated. That's the main complication. The second complication is one of, uh, again, fairly rare, is that of nerve injury. And, uh, and how does that happen? Well, if the, uh, during, while you're putting the tube in here, if you can bump up against, say, like one of the nerves coming out here, uh, that could result in a little bit of pain. It could result in a little bit of numbness. It could result in a little bit of uh, weakness, perhaps. But again, fairly rare. And one of the reasons it is rare is because uh, I try to do these using conscious sedation. So people are awake, uh, not awake, awake, but they are awake enough to tell me if they're experiencing pain. If I'm getting too close to the nerve, and they say, oh, geez, that hurts my leg, then I can reposition things a little bit um, uh, to try to help this out. So nerve injury. Uh, possibly, uh, I call it dural leaks. Again, pretty rare, uh, I, uh, very rare. But inside here, I mean, you're using some instruments uh, very close to the spinal cord. The covering of the spinal cord is called the dura. And in this particular situation, if there's any, uh, if, you know, if there's a, say some disc or something that's close by and you pull away at the disc, it might be attached to the dura, causes a little leak, uh, then this could be a complication as well. Um, I'd say the, the most, you know, probably the most common, I'd say problem, it's not a complication, but uh, is that, you know, the operation doesn't give you 100% relief of your pain. And uh, it's, although it's not really a complication, it's a statistic, I would say that's the major thing. And these things uh, really work pretty well between 80 and maybe 85, maybe 90% of the time for certain problems. Uh, uh, certainly for leg pain, uh, probably if you just for strictly for back pain, 
uh, it probably works about 65, maybe approaching 70% of the time. So that means 25 or 30% of the time uh, that uh, perhaps it would not relieve your back pain, maybe would relieve your leg pain. So uh, it's not really a complication, but it's a, uh, it's just a statistic, but one that's worth knowing. Um, I think that, you know, as I do these procedures, I think safety is of the utmost importance. That's why conscious sedation is very important. And, uh, uh, but that really covers it. Uh, you know, usually people just go from recovery and go on home afterward. Um, so I think that that covers the complications. So be sure that uh, if you've got any further questions, that this is a great time to uh, ask me. Uh, I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. So. Thanks a lot for listening and uh, any, any other questions be sure to ask me.